What's up? We're back with another film festival. This is the first of two films we're going to be covering from this year's Final Girls Film Festival, and this one is called Knocking. Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to our content, we create content like what you're watching right now simply to educate and engage individuals like yourselves on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I have the privilege of being one of the writers on staff here, podcasters, the event coordinator, and more. If you guys would like more information about what we do as a nonprofit, more uh, podcasts, uh, more movie reviews like what you guys are watching right now, links to our social media, Patreon, and more. All of those are going to be in the show notes below. Before I start, there's good news for you guys. If you guys are intrigued about what I'm going to be talking about in this in this review, you guys can actually check out Knocking when it comes to Shudder beginning Valentine's Day. All right, so let's jump into this. Knocking tells the story of a woman who is recently released from a psychiatric hospital and she moves into a new place who doesn't love new beginnings and in the process of this moving in she begins to hear a mysterious knocking and eventually she ends up kind of having another nervous breakdown around these mysterious knocks i'm going to say that the performances in this are done really well but there's a lot about this movie that just feels a little bit too familiar. I want to be sure to give the actors the credit that they deserve. And this is a foreign film, so if I do end up butchering some of the names and the stars and crew of said film, end up coming across this YouTube channel that's super tiny somehow. First off, thanks for watching. Second, I'm really sorry. I'm notoriously bad at names. Our protagonist's name is Molly in the film, and she is played wonderfully by Cecilia Mayo Cio. Uh, probably butchered that name. Super sorry. What I love so much about her performance is there's just this raw, just commitment. Like she transforms and into this. I think a film like Knocking is really easy to just write off as this woman is crazy. Like, there is nothing here of what she is claiming and therefore everything around her must be crazy. But this movie actually treats her like a character attempting to come back into society and I really value that as a cinephile or a viewer but also as a mental health advocate. Sometimes we have this tendency to look at the people's past and judge them for their past instead of acknowledging them as individuals and able to kind of see them uh, make a new path for themselves despite their past. And Knocking shares that, shares that sentiment and that's something that I really, really valued a lot about this film. And I appreciate it for twofold. First, it doesn't just outright give you Molly's story. Molly's story, one thing that is really intriguing about it is, is that yes, she hears these knocks that could in fact be coming to fruition, but the difference is, is that you learn of her past through a series of flashbacks and you explore this traumatic event that happened to her. That's really key in, in making the character empathetic, but also at the same time to keep the audience engaged. And this is one of the things for as somewhat as lackluster as this film can be at times. And I want to emphasize that lackluster at times because this movie does drag. I will say that those parts of the movie invested me into the character and into the story. Two, the second reason why I feel like this film really works with that notion is it allows... Uh, Cecilia as an actress to be able to truly bring a level of range as an actress but also to make Molly feel like a full-fledged character not just another carbon write him off she's crazy kind of thing that we've seen so many times in, in popular culture. The performance that My Lucio gives in this is incredible. Like, to say that she is committed would be an understatement. There are so many times where I just found myself really rooting for this character, that I found myself uncomfortable because of the decisions this character is making, but also at the same time, 
there are just really scenes, especially in the climax of this movie, where it just drew me to the edge because she's so, she believes and she's so committed in, in all of this. All of that, to, and I'm trying to like stay as far away from spoilers as possible, but all of that to say, she delivers a top tier performance. The pacing of this movie is really interesting to consider because for one, it, for one, it really ends up being this kind of really slow burn to begin with. And once the knocking portion of the story actually begins, the film kind of slowly starts to pick up the pace, but then somehow kind of finds itself at this like snail crawl pace again before digging into this like faster pace. I don't really know how to describe it. It's just, it's kind of uneven and it's kind of paced what pacing wise it's kind of all over the place and sometimes it's really difficult to do that with the non-linear storytelling which this movie is all about because you're finding out her backstory through a series of flashbacks but also at the same time you're also living this recovery process with the character it's a very tight rope to walk and sometimes it works really well and other times it doesn't and the times where it doesn't work well like the story drags and when i end i want to emphasize when it drags it drags i find myself with this catch 22 because i like this i like the fact that the story is non-linear storytelling because it works better for the character and for the story that the filmmakers are trying to tell but also at the same time it also creates these really low points for the storytelling and for the narrative all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this one on a Rorschach rating scale, a three out of five. Like I said, I think this movie is done extraordinarily well. It, the cin I didn't even get, get into like the, the technicalities of this film. It is terrific cinematography. The score is wonderful. The performances are great. The pacing is literally all over the place. And in that pacing issues, you also have these really dry lulls that you're just waiting for the next high. Like I said, you can check out Knocking when it hits on February 14th on Shudder. Let's go ahead and get into our mental health moment. I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I kind of want to expand upon it in just a little bit. You guys that are new to our content, mental health moment is where we examine a theme of mental health and we pull out and we just talk about it for a few minutes and hopes to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental and honestly, this is this is one that strikes really close to home for me because I grew up in a fairly conservative Christian household. I've talked about it several times on the Victims and Villains podcast and Abyss Gazing both. And I've clearly not stayed in touch with those conservative roots outside of also being a Christian. Yeah, in case you didn't uh, get the my my what I was going for, I got told all the time. Every new tattoo I got, it was another can of worms talking about how because I have tattoos, I'm going to hell. And honestly, that really messed up my mental health for a long period of time. Simultaneously, I'm telling this story because Molly's, uh, the deeper into the film we go with Molly and the more people learn about her past, the the more you can kind of feel that people are only seeing her for her past instead of here is a woman that once was broken and is now attempting to put the pieces of her life back together. A really deep theme that's woven throughout the course of this film and that's actually whether you like this movie or you don't, whether you like horror or you don't, take this, take this if you learn nothing else in this video and learn that People are not just their past. And if you're going through depression right now, if you're going through suicidal tendencies or self-harm or addiction or self, you know, whatever that may be, you are not your past. We all fall. We all mess up. We all have terrible skeletons in our closet. Some of us have more than others. Some of us have worse than others. But that doesn't determine our value as a human being and it doesn't determine our value as a person a trying to distance themselves because people can change but also at the same time people can forge themselves and find redemption we see constant movies that are made 
telling and depicting the story of the underdog finding success because, oh, well, they're forging ahead. You're not the worst thing you've ever done. And so it's, it's really tricky to, to kind of close out this video because, you know, I, I feel like so much of my own process was learning my identity and who I was. And so I just want to encourage everyone with that too, is to understand that you're not the worst thing, but also emphasize the importance of understanding identity and understanding who you are as an individual and being happy and at peace with who you are as a human being. And I just want to throw this out there. If you need anyone, all of our contact links along with our mental health resource library are in the show notes below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back in just a couple of days talking about another selection from this film festival. Uh, if you guys would like more information about the Final Girls Berlin Film Festival, links are in the descriptions below. Thank you guys for watching.